Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel, it's your girl from Elia Frag Baby and welcome back to another episode of the Law in Practice, okay? I welcome you back, thanks to all my subscribers, my returning subscribers and my new subscribers, please, as you watch this video, help me subscribe to make this, you know, this channel grow. Okay? In our last episode on Law in Practice, we actually talk about step-by-step -step process of how to commence action in court you know the last episode which was part a we discussed civil action okay in this episode we will be discussing criminal trial okay the commencement till judgment okay how a criminal trial commence you know the processes of the trial till judgment is delivered okay meaning we are talking about criminal you know in civil matter okay it's actually straightforward and, and and strictly courts okay unlike the criminal trial we have different actors that take part in criminal trial okay from the police you know before it now gets to the court to be touching all these um, actors and the parts they play meanwhile we're going to be making this video as short as possible because we want to start talking about criminal trial in fact we will do like and have video okay which we don't want to do okay so we're going to be delving straight into arrest okay arrest is made by the police okay the police is given their they derive their power from the police act they have the right to you know make arrests of offenders when there is a complaint you know of commission of an offense or suspicion of commission of an offense okay the police has actually empowered the police to make an arrest of the suspect you know suspected offender okay so after the arrest of an offender you know after a complainant lay a complaint a formal complaint in the police station the next thing is for the police to actually go you know find you know the offender and actually bring them to the police station that is an arrest okay before a police can arrest they need a warrant of arrest which should be issued you know which must be shown you know to the offender you know before he is actually arrested except he's actually arrested at the point of commission of the offense okay after an arrest has been made, your client has been arrested and you are invited, okay, to stand as the lawyer counsel to this particular person. The next thing for you to do is to make sure you get there as fast as possible so that you can be present when the statement of your client is at which who is the suspect now is taken by the police, okay? Because we don't want, we want to avoid the decision of undue influence or duress, you know, in is making a statement, okay? The first you have to actually interview your client okay try to in fact they'll give you the opportunity to, to speak with your client try to speak with your client so that we will not go and say some things that will actually incriminate him even things they have not done we have seen some suspects like that at the end of the day they will just say some things that will, the police will just take and that is all that is it you know you will not be able to retract it again because you already said it so that's why you need your lawyer to actually go with you when you are about to write your statement so that you don't say some things incriminating things that will actually work against you you know in the course of your of your trial against you okay so now after taking okay whilst taking the statement of your client what you need to do you'll be present while the statement is being written okay when it's being written which must be written by your client himself okay the client must be the one that's the suspect now must be the one writing is if he can actually write if he cannot write the police can write for him okay but then after writing you have to go through what he has written what the police has written on behalf of your client okay to to make sure that what your client said was what was written you know in that statement before your client sign or append this you know thumb prints on it as a lawyer you have to still go through it to make sure that there is no space okay there is no space left maybe by the side or after the conclusion of your client state or your client's yeah, statement okay so that the police cannot will not be able to anybody will not be able to like go and write something you know some other things that your client did not say during the course of writing this statement giving a statement okay so that's why you must make sure that the remaining parts the part that you did not write anything on is actually cancelled in your presence okay and make sure it's signed to to the um, statement the signature of, of your client is actually gotten in your presence okay after that it will be if it's available offense that will get to the stage of bail okay if it's available offense, then your clients will be, the, who is the suspect now, will be, you know, granted bail on 
meeting the condition they please most of the time it's just for you to produce a short seed mm -hmm. most important thing is that it must be an adult you know that lives within that jurisdiction okay not somebody from how you can't bring somebody from another state to come and stand in as suspect for your for your for your clients it's not who is a suspect now you know it's not going to, to actually work okay so when you have a, 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 a competent you know shorty you know and then the, the offense is a available offense that is very important you know it depends on if it's all these um what capital offenses okay like I'm jobbery, you know, like major offenses like murder, you know. There are some offenses, although they in the criminal code they actually believable, but then there are stringent, you know, conditions before they can actually obtain bail for people that have been accused of such offenses, okay? So if if they are if it's just bailable offense, a simple offense, you know, that your or your clients, you know, who is not the suspect committed, okay, you can actually sit down there and perfect his bail, okay, and let him get him to be released, you know, to you that day, okay. It doesn't mean that the trial has ended at that point. It means that he is on bail, okay? And on bail, is on bail means that is the police will not be given the opportunity to actually carry out their investigation at this stage, okay? When your client is on bail, you know, it doesn't mean he's free. It doesn't mean that their offense has been withdrawn. It means that he's not held, you know, he's not in custody, okay? He's at home, but then he's not free from that offense from that accusation yet until the court pronouncing as free or until the investigation of the police they discover that he cannot even be charged for that particular offense the next thing is for the police to carry out their investigation to find out evidences that will link the suspect to the crime he is accused of okay so if at the end of their investigation they discover that he has not actually committed the offense you know that he, ha he doesn't have any link to that he has to be released okay he has to be charged against him from as the position has to be withdrawn at that stage okay but then if at the end of the day the, dis the police discover some tiny tiny traces you know linking him to the offense committed okay then he will be taken before the magistrate court uh, at the first instance okay he has to be taken before the magistrate court where the lawyer will have to come you know and actually take his bill you know apply to the court directly for his bill because it's only the court that can actually grant at this stage the police are functions of issue meaning they are not their, their power stops at this point when a, a, a suspect is taken before the court okay. the first thing that will be done is and remain the charge will be preferred against them will be registered okay will be registered at the registry after it has been registered and assigned a court then the Next stage is an arraignment, okay? Arraignment is this time that you will be asked to come and to come and plead guilty or not guilty to the um, offense, you know, charged is charged with. The practice is that the suspects, after be, being placed in the dock on his arraignment, must plead to each count of the charge separately, okay? If he's charged with five counts charge. Okay, he has to plead to count one, count two, count three, even if it's ten counts charge, he has to plead to each of the charge separately, okay? And pleading means him ad admitting to be guilty or not while the charge has been read to him. At this stage, after it, the charge has been read to him and um, he pleads not guilty to the charge, then you, as a lawyer, what you have to do at this point is to stand up and address the court and apply for his formally apply for his court bill okay you apply to the court i think the court know that is that you, okay you have, you have to like put up a case for him okay like making it making the court know that he maybe is the first offender you know maybe he's you know trying to like you are not at this point proving his innocence no you know because i've not even gone through into the matter itself but at this point what you're just going to be talking about is the fact that the matter is a billable offense you know and the, since the billable offense the court has the power to actually grant him bail at this point okay and you have to also substantiate it by telling the court that he has a family you know if he's a family man he has a family you know at that um, this is the first time he will, commit, he will be charged with this kind of offense you know and that there's nothing really that what the police has done is, is just very further investigation, you have not been able to, you know, you have to just make a case for him so that at least his bill will be, although it's a billable offense, you still have to tell the court that 
he has done this and that and that you will be present for trial that will always come to trial i will make sure you come to trial okay so you apply to it for his bail and after application for bail and the court grants you if the bill of most of the time the court will grant you you know the bail the, your suspect um, your client the bill and when he's got that bill the next thing is for you to perfect the bill okay so you perfect the bill of your client and is then released to go home that is not the end of the matter it's only really discharged from the matter but then it's on bail to come to court from home he's free to come to court from home that's his only thing but then if he has not been granted bail then he is taken into court into prison okay as an awaiting trial inmates okay until his matter you know it, until his trial starts okay if it's a matter that should be tried by the high courts okay that the magistrate court does not have jurisdiction on then the charge charge file will be taken to the ministry of justice you know where they will look at you know the the complaints and the evidences brought by the police at this point it is only the attorney general of the state that has the power to institute a criminal action against a suspect okay so based on that when after the um magistrate released your clients that is the suspect on bail or maybe has been remanded in, in, in custody in prison custody you know the next stage is for the file to be transferred to the ministry of justice okay when the matter uh, the file gets to the ministry of justice what they are meant to do is to look at the evidences you know gather during the investigation by the police and if based on the investigation you know based on what the police are able to you know get during the course of um, of, of investigation the attorney general you must have uh, um delegated the power to you know we have police prosecutors all those people even the state prosecutor all those people are actually working you know for the attorney general on behalf of the attorney general because he's the only one that the constitution empowered to institute criminal action against a suspect in nigeria okay so after your client has been released on bail or maybe he has been sent to prison custody because his offense is not bailable okay the next thing that will happen is for his file to be transferred to the ministry of justice for legal advice okay this is this legal advice means that the ministry of justice you know has to look that's at the general now and it's the delegates okay we look at the file to see what and what evidences evidences were gathered during the invest, police investigation so after consideration of the evidences gathered you know they have to ar ar arrive at a decision whether or not this particular person sh should be charged for the crime you know he's accused of committing that is legal advice so they will be waiting you now be waiting for you know as a lawyer i have to keep up you know with that trying to get the legal advice out on time okay try to work on it you know at the ministry you know you have to like you know try to like be on your toes to make sure that at least because there is a lot of files there so try to work to monitor your, your client's um, case you know file so that you know um the the legal advice will come out on time okay so after the legal advice from the ministry of justice and um, in the legal advice, it is stipulated that the the suspect should be charged for the particular you know crime he was accused of committing. Okay, then the trial will start. Okay, the trial will start. So after destroying the case of the prosecution, like puncturing their case during cross examination, and you are very sure there is nothing substantial before the court for you, you know for you to proceed on to to defense. Then you can tell the court that you are filing a no case submission on behalf of your client meaning they don't have any case to answer okay based on what this prosecution have actually brought before the court you know there is a lot of doubt you know they are, so, they are supposed to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt so you are telling the court that they have not been able to there is a lot of doubt you know that surrounded what they are saying to the court so because of that you are filing a no case submission for your client and you can actually do this it's actually another stage in, pro, in criminal you know um trial so if you tell the court and the court said okay no problem file your no case submission you don't yes the court will actually grant you yes you want to say you don't have you don't want to defend the client again because you think they don't have you, you don't they don't have a case against you the court will allow you okay go and file your no case submission so after what you need to do while filing your no case submission is like that you should do a lot of research okay to help buttress your point while you think your case doesn't have any your client doesn't have any case to answer in court okay by trying to like bring out the points you know during the court examination that you used to puncture the case of the other party okay try to bring it out try to sub, su uh, support it with cases you know with statutes and other stuff you know at the end of the day you can actually at this stage terminate the case against your, your client and you'll be decided and acquitted okay but then after filing your your 
look at submission, the court we have to, you know, we have to apply to, we have to uh, appear in court the next day to actually adopt it, you know, to move your no case submission, to move it. Okay, when you move your no case submission, the other party has a right to, you know, that, that's the prosecution now, they have a right to actually respond to your no case submission. Okay, when you get to court, you have to move it and all, and then the court must make a ruling on your no case submission. Okay, that really will now determine whether your your the case is going on you have to be you have to still open your defense or not if at the point of no case submission the courts agree with you with all your argument and all that your case your client doesn't have any you know case to answer yes why not you will be discharged and acquitted and that will be the end of the trial okay but then if the courts on the other hand determine that no that's why what you have said with everything the prosecutor have been able to put before the court that your court, your client should be should be allowed to come and you know enter into his defense then you have to enter into the defense of your client you know so after examining your client in chief okay that is if the court call you to, to enter your defense okay after examining them in chief then the other party also that's the prosecution will have a right to come and examine them okay and you also have a right to examine them like normal trial procedure okay so after doing all those and you are done with Calling all your witnesses, you know, the next is to tell the court that you are done with the case, you know, that this is the case for the defense, okay? And when the court, after the claimant has finished, concluded your case, you open yours, and then you conclude your own, then that's the end of trial, okay? The next thing is for the court to give you a date for judgment, where you go to court to get judgment on behalf of your clients. That is criminal trial summarized okay because by the time we start elaborating on criminal trial we will not even about three hours will still be on it but then this this is a summary of criminal trial and if you watch it and follow these tips you know you will not make any mistake you know what and what you should do at every point you know in criminal trial especially on behalf of your client thank you very much once again for watching my video i love you guys please keep liking keep commenting and keep subscribing you know we need to grow and um, don't worry i still have a lot of lot of lot of lot of, lot of content you know to dish out on this channel i love you guys thank you love you see you in my next video mm.